Off the coast of Africa lives one of the most critically endangered birds on our planet, the African penguin. Join us as we visit one of their last and largest breeding colonies to learn how humans have pushed them to the brink of extinction and how the Association of Zoos and Aquariums, their partners, and people like you are on a mission to save the last 1% of their population before it's too late. We're off the coast of South Africa on an island called Bird Island in a marine protected area surrounded by the critically endangered African penguin. My journey with this species began two years ago when the Association of Zoos and Aquariums held a Kickstarter campaign to raise funds to help save these penguins. Today, I'm here at the Bird Island Research Station to meet these birds in person and to share their struggle with the world. As seabirds, they spend months out in the open ocean and come to land for breeding. Once they find a mate, they build a nest which for the African penguin is a burrow. And they usually burrow in their guano, which is essentially poop. It's nutrient rich poop. For generations, guano from millions of seabirds piled up and hardened over time. To avoid predators in the sun, they used their strong feet and claws to burrow deep into the guano. Unfortunately, this is one of the last natural burrows left on the planet because somebody stole their guano. Why, you might ask? 200 years ago, humans discovered plants would grow larger and faster if they mixed penguin poop with soil. Like humans, penguins eat fish because they are highly nutritious. After digestion, Nutrients end up in the guano, making it a powerful fertilizer. Word spread, and people came from around the world to stock up, making guano more valuable than silver and gold. The workers would start to pack it into really large bags. Then they would bring it into this guano storage building, pile it all the way up to the rafters. Then they would transfer it onto the ship for it to be taken to the mainland or to Europe. Within 50 years, almost all the guano on this island was gone. It's hard to believe that at one point in time, the guano was three to five meters high. Now, it's just rocks and sand. That guano provided the perfect habitat to keep the male and the female and the eggs and the chicks safe. Not just from predators, but also from the sun. Oh, it's hot. Those thick black waterproof feathers make it feel like they're wearing a thick winter coat in the middle of a hot summer day. It's hard. It's hard to watch them. Their beaks are open, they're panting. They're really struggling, but everything, everything in their body is telling them to stay with those eggs. It's a horrible dilemma. What would you do if you had to choose? Stay and die of heat stroke, or abandon your chick and expose it to predators and the sun? Over the last 150 years, People also ate their eggs, overfished their food, and polluted their habitat. To top it off, the climate crisis is disrupting the natural balance of the ecosystem they rely on. Their numbers have decreased by 99%. 99%. In the 1800s, there were over 4 million African penguins. But today, there are only about 50,000 of them left. These beautiful, charismatic animals have an important role in the planet's food web. As indicator species, they let scientists know the health of the ocean. And to South African national parks, they're just as important as elephants and rhinos. 
but we are really close to a point of no return, where they can't be saved. In the next few years, we have to work as a team to give them a fighting chance, or wild African penguins are doomed to extinction. Thankfully, there is hope. People from a multitude of organizations are coming together to use their knowledge and skills to save this species from extinction. AZA's SAFE program is fostering collaboration on a number of projects, including one to give parent penguins a safe place to raise their chick. To achieve this goal, researchers first turned to nature for answers. Instruments were implanted in some of the last remaining guano nests in the world, right here on Bird Island. Now this is a natural penguin nest. Researchers copied the size and shape, but also took it one step further. The flag here tells us that the sensor inside the nest is currently tracking heat and humidity. Once they got the data, animal care experts used the information to create the ideal artificial nest. To learn more, we traveled back to the mainland to meet up with Kevin Graham of the Dallas Zoo to see how they make this state-of-the-art penguin home. So after three years of research, design, testing, failures, uh, trying again, we've ended up with nests that are ready to go out to the island. Today, a team of locals is creating this new design. It's about the size of a doghouse and kind of looks like an igloo. This two-piece design keeps goals and sunshine out and allows ideal airflow to keep its occupants cool. A lot of research went into the design, the shape, the size, everything that's necessary to make the penguin nest exactly what it should be. Material had to meet very specific requirements. The density of the fabric, the reflectiveness of the pattern, the insulative quality, everything had to be perfect and this material worked. This special fabric that is used to make roads has the ability to soak up a liquid ceramic blend and when molded correctly, is strong enough to stand the test of time. We had to find the best way we could copy Mother Nature. We can't be perfect, we can't be Mother Nature, but we've come close. They've been able to get it down to an exact science and streamline the manufacturing process, thanks to dedicated conservationists like Trudy Milan of Dyer Island Conservation Trust, John Worth of Pan-African Association of Zoos and Aquaria, and of course, the team of guys who are proud to help their local penguins. When we've lost 99% of the population, we can't lose that last 1%. What do we do next? Next is, you know, we go to the island and give penguins homes. From the nest facility, it's a short drive to Addo Elephant National Park, where we meet up with the rest of the team. Because we have a lot of gear, we have a lot of nests, and a lot of crew, we're gonna have to take a few trips. It's a quick helicopter ride over beautiful sand dunes and the blue Indian Ocean to the tiny rock known as Bird Island. Once unloaded, we assemble the two-piece nests and label them so researchers and park rangers can track success rates. And now it's time to deploy them all. One by one, we cleared vegetation, faced them away from prevailing winds, and anchored them down with rocks. Once in place, the last step is to record the nest number, along with an exact GPS location. Within a matter of minutes, penguins are moving in.
It took many years of data collection, monitoring, passion, determination, hard work, and conservation dollars to get to this point right here. We were able to deploy 100 nests on the island today, and we know there's many more to come because this is incredibly successful. In the morning, Kevin discovers the first sign of success. It's a very freshly laid egg. Congratulations, Penguin Dad. <laughs> I didn't do this. <laughs> I know. <laughs> uh, so this is what it's all about, right? What it's really all about is healthy chicks leaving, but you have to have eggs to get healthy chicks. That's right. And she's inside the nest, nice and calm, nice and cool, no heat stress at all. Just a little over a meter away, we've got a bird that's in the exact same temperature and is really being bothered by the sun. We need yeah. more nests. We definitely need more nests. While this proves the effectiveness of the project, there are still thousands of penguins nesting above ground. With your help, we can deploy homes for all of Bird Island's penguins, along with neighboring colonies, and save this animal from extinction. What an incredible trip, deploying a hundred nests. As you can see, there's still more nests to head over to the island, and hopefully, with all the help of all of you, we can get more out there in the future as well. Huge thanks to Addo National Park, Bird Island Marine Protected Area, the Association of Zoos and Aquariums, Dallas Zoo, and all of our partners, as well as all of our Kickstarter contributors for making this happen. Woo! What an incredible journey. Until next time.